welcome to tonight's edition of The Big Story. My name is Michelle Ngele Odiambo. Now tonight, uh, political tensions between uh, Deputy President William Ruto and opposition leader Raila Odinga have reached a climax, with each side accusing the other of anti-cooperation maneuvers. Deputy President William Ruto fired the first salvo on Sunday, accusing Raila Odinga of plotting to kick him out of Jubilee. While Raila Odinga's team responded with a scathing statement, saying the Deputy President was exuding a persona not fit for the President, if at all, with Raila relating the remarks by Deputy President William Ruto to the ongoing war on corruption. Now, both Raila and Ruto hardly see eye to eye, even after the famous handshake that cooled the temperatures between Jubilee and NASA following the presidential election last year. Now, the only time the two faced each other face to face was during the National Prayer Day. Uh, they were made to not only shake hands, but also embrace in a hug. Now, clearly, another prayer day may be held before next year if the two are to bury the hatchet, maybe forge forward in this matter. Well, here now is the deputy president in that statement that revealed the political Cold War at play. Unajua mimi nilikuwa ODM na nikafukuzwa ODM, nikapelekwa kotini vile hawa kinaisha na dori wameandikiwa barua hata na mimi niliandi, niliandikiwa barua sasa wale nataka niwaambie hamuwezi kunifukuza ODM ati mkanifuata ati mnanifukuza jubili haiwezekani hiyo hiyo haiwezekani bana ati wanajibanga huko porojo fitina o oh, tutavunja jubili watavunja watavunja jubili ya nani hiyo ni ndoto ya mchana nani Hiyo msahau kabisa Muende <laughs> mutafute kazi zingine ya kufanya. Hiyo haiwezekani. I want to categorically state that we have no space for gossip and propaganda and conmanship in our party and in our government. Well, tonight on the show, I shall be speaking to Nandi County Governor Stephen Sang, who is joining us live all the way from Nandi County, as well as ODM, Patti Stalwart, and the political analyst Joseph Simeka. But before I engage them, let's cross over to our lead reporter, Sophia Wanuna, who is on standby in Lovington here in Nairobi. Sophia, good evening. It's turning out to be quite a war of words there between allies of both Deputy President William Ruto and Raila Odinga. Bring us up to date with the intrigues of the day. Indeed, Michelle, good evening to you. We've had the deputy president there stating nobody will kick him out of Jubilee as they did in ODM. Um, yesterday and he also talked about he will not allow anyone to use the handshake to export conmanship into Jubilee one of the statements as well we had from the DP who has been in the coastal region on one week tour several development projects that he has been launching and of course a number of supporters and uh, yeah, the likes of Aisha Jumwa Dori as well that have of course were elected on the ODM party that have expressed their support solidly behind the DP come 2022. But today, earlier in the day, we had uh, from Jeanette Mohammed as well as uh, Governor Joho, and they um, questioned the DP's remarks, saying that a person who holds that kind of an office should not speak in the way he did. Um, and uh, even the governor saying, how dare he speak of the uh, former prime minister, Raila Odinga, as a con man. So they argue if he's going to be leaving Jubilee, he should not be looking for a scapegoat. Those were the words of Jeanette Mohammed. Uh, but of course, a lot of back and forth, the ping pong, uh, but now coming out to the fore. So let's talk a little bit more about this with a uh, Kikuyu member of parliament, that's Kimani Chungwa. He's also the budget. Uh, chair in the National <coughs> Assembly. Thank you for making time for us. Um, the fact that the Deputy President spoke to these things means they are either irking him or he's taking them seriously. Why, in your view, would he come out to say there are people trying to chase him out of Jubilee? I mean, this is the DP. He's a Deputy Party leader. To chase him out of Jubilee, is that even possible? 
One, I tell you, it's not possible to chase uh, William Ruto out of uh, Jubilee uh, because he is a major stakeholder, being the deputy party leader. But I think you need to understand his statement from the genesis of what he was responding to. That he was responding to the allegations by the ODM um, uh, deputy whip, I think, Junette Mohammed. And you know who Junette Mohammed speaks for when he said that uh, what the chaos that you witnessed in uh, the National Assembly the other week were orchestrated by the Deputy President, apparently had held night meetings in Karen with uh, certain members of Jubilee and some from ODM, uh, basically those who were opposing the finance bill. And I think, uh, you know, that the, their desire, and uh, whoever sent Junet Mohammed, and your guess is as good as mine, who sent him, is to create divisions within Jubilee. I, I don't think it's lost on us, those of us who truly believe in the ideology of Jubilee, that of bringing this nation together and doing our politics not based on ethnic divisions, um, uh, but based on an ideology of national unity and prosperity for the people of Kenya. Um, it's not lost on us that there are those, uh, of course, who would want to use a handshake, and um, I say that also without any fear of contradiction, that indeed there are those within ODM that want to use a handshake to foment divisions within Jubilee. And I think that's what the Deputy President was responding to, telling them that if you have dreams that you can just walk in from wherever and use the handshake to create divisions within Jubilee, uh, then uh, you better find something else to do. Okay. Let me then put this to you, in as far as the vote you've brought about the then finance bill. Before then, as we saw conversing around ensuring the Jubilee party votes for uh, the president's amendment and memorandum, there are those who argued the DP had been rather silent in that period of time. We did not see him do as many tours. He did not speak outrightly on the issue. And there were Jubilee members who on that day came out to oppose and that as you said, there were those reports that he and others were pushing for that no vote. So then can you strongly, clearly and equivocally speak to that he, there was no such effort? Uh, let me tell you, Sophia, first, uh, I think, uh, and that's the gossip, rumors and innuendos the deputy president was speaking to. And we know who, who in this country are very good at gossip and uh, political propaganda. And you will not find that in Jubilee. You will find that in uh, NASA and OD, particularly ODM, and that's what they are doing, and that's why he's talking about gossip, propaganda, and uh, funny innuendos. I'll tell you for a fact. The deputy president, when uh, the finance bill was um, uh, sent to the president and the president happened to leave the country, mm -hmm. the first person to speak to it was Raila Odinga when he said he certain that President Huru Kenyatta would assent to the finance bill as it were. Mm -hmm. Shock on him, the president didn't sign it. And he, uh, after consultations, the president came out uh, to the public and addressed the nation and said, following extensive consultations, yeah. I will tell you for a fact, because I did take part in some of those consultations, mm -hmm. some meetings that were chaired by the Deputy President to seek for solutions. Therefore, I can tell you for a fact that the Deputy President was in the forefront of finding a solution to the stalemate that was there. You remember the second person who spoke to that finance bill before the President made a decision? Mm -hmm when he was still away. The deputy president, I can't remember where he was speaking from, I think somewhere in the Rift Valley uh, or in uh, Eastern Province. I can't remember exactly where. Right. But he did say that the executive and parliament would consult each other and find a solution. And that is exactly what happened. Okay. We consulted between the executive. You remember we had a meeting um, that uh, initially we started with the chair under the chairmanship of the speaker, with the attorney general, with the solicitor general, with the CES and PS in charge of the national treasury, uh, myself as chairman of the budget committee, the uh, chair of the finance committee, the leader of majority, and we held those meetings and also held other meetings under the chairmanship of the deputy president, I can now disclose that to you. Yeah. Uh, and all that was geared towards finding a solution. When His Excellency the President made a decision on what to do to lower from 16 to 8 percent, he had the express support of many of us in Jubilee, those who, uh, and I dare say for being misguided in a way, mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of what we saw in the House were 
politicians who, want to, who wanted to play to the gallery, uh, people who wanted to make the people believe that we are here fighting for you, while in actual sense none of them was doing what they wanted the, the public to see. Right. And I've challenged any of them and I've challenged any of those politicians who are dancing and singing Mogidi songs on the floor. Mm -hmm. I had one yesterday from like Kipi County say that the, she was opposing this final bill, the memorandum from the president, because of kerosene. But kerosene was not even on the memorandum. All right. Kerosene had been passed during the finance uh, bill debate. The, the second, no, the second reading and the third reading. Okay. None of those members of parliament sponsored a single amendment touching on the issues they have been speaking to the public about. Right. Therefore, th those are the people we, we are talking about, political, co political conmanship, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of gossip and uh, political games that are necessary at this time. So you say it would be difficult for one to remove the deputy president from Jubilee, but that he chose to say that. He has, in essence, brought this debate, this discussion tonight by giving weight to those sentiments that have been made. And it's not lost on Kenyans. This Tanga Tanga everyone has been talking about, it's the president who spoke about huyu kijana, maneno ya kutanga tanga, so that as those in DP Ruto's camp would want to say it is the ODM that are trying to foment, the president has also expressed displeasure with some of these tourings from different parts of the country. Sophia, you will remember, and I want to take you back uh, a few months ago when the president used the term tanga tanga. Three days after, the president and the deputy president were at a funeral in uh, Siakago, uh, 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 laying to rest the mother of our speaker, uh, J.B. Muturi. And I think after that, Kenyans got the context with which the president had used that term tanga tanga in terms of explaining, the deputy president explaining that you actually send me to represent you and to do government work as your principal assistant as a deputy president. It also be termed as a smart way in communication of responding when you've been attacked. You know, you may want to interpret it the way you want to interpret it, but I'll tell you as it is and as it was explained. And you've, you've heard the president has never used that term again. You must give it to Huru Kenyatta. His Swahili may not be as good as uh, that from the coastal people. But uh, the, the, the thing is, and ask yourself, the second person to use that term, Raila Odinga, accused William Ruto of Kurukaruka Hapanapale. Remember that time, and I want to take you back to that time, and now you draw the parallel between what Raila Odinga said then. It was after William Ruto had had a three-day tour of the coast province, and Raila Odinga accused him of Kurukaruka Hapanapale, accused him of uh, going around the country doing politics. This time round, I will tell you, Junette Mohammed was speaking for Raila Odinga, and again, on the basis of William Ruto having had a five-day tour of the coast province, there are people who still believe in this country, that there are certain sections of this country that you cannot tour without the blessings of those who perceived but to be Jeanette there. But was responding to the DP. Junette was not responding to the DP. Remember, he was speaking from the campaigns they are doing in Migori. And he was just looking for something to foment divisions. And I, I, I just take you back to your question on whether the deputy president fears being uh, get, <laughs> thrown out of uh, Jubilee. That's why he said it is a dream. Nindoto, you cannot, uh, you cannot even uh, begin to think that anybody would think of getting William Ruto out of Jubilee. Uh, Jubilee, uh, remember, came to being because of the work of William Ruto and President Huru Kenyatta. But there, there is desperation within um, uh, ODM as a political party, and desperation from especially its pa party leader, uh, the, the, the ODM's uh, leader, mm -hmm. to foment and create divisions in Jubilee. That we know for a fact, and I'll say that without any fear of contradiction, that he is indeed extremely desperate. Having broken NASA, and uh, his desire now is to imagine that he can come and do to Jubilee what he did in Kanu, get into uh, Kanu and uh, split it up. So he imagines or dreams that he will do that to Jubilee. But I, I also want to reiterate what the Deputy President said, that we came together in Jubilee because we had a shared ideology of bringing this country together. And I do not know what problem these people have with William Ruto visiting the coast province, as much as they may consider the coast province to be their bedroom or something that they must hold dear to themselves, if indeed they are sincere, genuine, and honest okay. in bringing this country together, what problem do you have with the principal assistant to the president, someone who has been elected to serve all the people of this uh, country without regard of where they voted in the last elections or what political affiliation they have, what problem do you have with the deputy president visiting those areas? Because you will discover every time William Ruto visits the coast region, and especially if 
more so with uh, coastal political leaders who express support for him in the 2022 elections, these problems will come up. And that is why th this also just goes back into its 2018. We're way away, uh, far off 2022. Yes, the deep opinion of himself most times, except for this occasion, when he directly addressed to those politicians, he's talking about development. But everyone present is all about 2022. So that again, back to the conversation, he's a president seeking to secure legacy. He's a deputy all about his ambition and succeeding his boss. And the question would be, is the president then finding himself in a difficult position in that on one hand he's a deputy who wants to succeed him and here is an ally now, uh, uh, what's his name? Raila Dinga, I beg your pardon, who they have shaken hands and agreed to work together to build uh, peace and progress and build bridges as they described it. How does that augur for the president? I think you need to look at it from uh, two angles. One, uh, the deputy president when he spoke in Tana River, I think on Friday or Thursday, I think on Friday, he did actually answer back to those politicians who were there, who were speaking about 2022 and told them, let us focus on the development that we are doing now in serving the people of Kenya. When the time comes, we will do the politics. And he actually said, um, uh, let there uh, be no panic for those who are panicking, because he knew there are people who are panicking. And those are the people you saw speak the, the following day. Because they, they were indeed panicking that here he is, all over the coast region, from one county to the other, uh, followed by uh, the whole brigade. Ninety percent of the elected leadership in the coast province was with him there. Uh, and of course, people are getting jittery, people are getting panicky. Uh, but I think uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto have a very good understanding of each other and what your responsibilities are in government. President Uhuru Kenyatta does not mind his deputy going around the country, helping him as his principal assistant in the rollout of development projects, because that's the legacy of development and prosperity that President Uhuru Kenyatta desires to live for this country. And he cannot do this alone. He will have to do it with his deputy president and the rest of us who believe in him. And therefore, we will do that without any apologies to anybody. Well, on the other side, there are those who, of course, uh, Raila Odinga, don't, don't, I don't know why you want to believe that it's only William Ruto who has a desire to uh, succeed Uhuru Kenyatta. Uh, Raila Odinga, for all intents and purposes, is a candidate in 2022. I think you have heard his people say it. Uh, but, of course, he wants to masquerade and present himself as somebody who is now very presidential and who has no desire for any politics, while at the same time he's instigating divisive politics, instigating divisions, uh, not just within NASA, but now trying even to creep into Jubilee. But all we are telling him is that we, are, we welcome the handshake in, in, in so far as this will create tranquility and allow government to work to deliver on the mandate that we were elected to deliver. And in so far as that handshake is helping the president to do, be able to deliver on that mandate, we will support it. But we must draw a line. We must say that when it comes to politics, I'll tell you, as a person, as Kemani Shongwa, my politics and that of Raila Odinga are, are incompatible completely. Mm -hmm. He believes in things, certain things that I don't believe in, like political divisions, and I, I will not, and I, in sincerity and dishonesty in politics, I do not believe in dishonesty. Mm -hmm. I do not believe in being insincere, um, and that's why I'll, I'll say it as it is. Okay. All right. Many thanks. Kimani Ichungwa is the Kikui Member of Parliament and he says there must be a point a time comes that that line must be drawn. And we are seeing the beginning perhaps of that drawing of the line with the DP saying you those trying to eject me, it's not going to happen. They're daydreaming uh, and also calling out those who may try to use their handshake for whatever divisions uh, or purposes to serve their political ends. But earlier today we had Ray Laudinga say that Kanan, the journey to Kanan is still on. Him, the president, uh, the former deputy president, Kalonzo Musioka, and Mudavadi are heading there. He did not touch on William Ruto, but hey, let's wait. This is politics. We'll see how it all plays out, Michelle. Thank you, Sophia. Well, let's now listen in to what the minority chief whip, Jeanette Mohammed, who believes that uh, Deputy President William Ruto is ready to leave Jubilee and is uh, looking for an excuse in Raila Odinga. Let's listen in to what he had to say earlier today. We are not chasing him from anywhere. He's running away from his shadow. And let him not look for scapegoats and blame game when he has decided it is time for him to leave. Because it is normal for him to leave parties. He has left Kanu, he left UDM, he left URP, he left ODM. He left all like five, six parties. 
So for him to leave Jubilee is not a big deal, we know. But he's looking for a scapegoat, he's looking for a reason to leave, and that kind of politics is no longer in our, entertained in our country. Now, his party leader, Raila Odinga, who has been accused of rocking the Jubilee party, believes the war on corruption has triggered a panic button that has sent many politicians holding on to straws in a desperate effort to escape the turning tide. Listen in. The moment we answer, Vita did the officer. The officer did the officer in the letter he left to Temeko. When I watch when I pick a killer, when I work. Because the Bambi Ailem Tetemeko ya Vita did the officer. When I go up, he and your suburb. Now, maybe in the same, I come away with you, away when I tear, when I go up and in. I'm attending the funeral mass of the late Kenneth Matiba in Uhura Stadium in Muranga County. President Uhuru Kenyatta also spoke of the handshake skepticism on both sides of the political divide. Did he perhaps have a premonition that the disquiet would go this far? Let's listen in to the president. Na najua ni wengi ambao hawakufurahia vile tulifanya. Tunajua tu tunasikiza huko na huko. Hata wengine upande yangu, hata wengine upande yake. Hivyo ndivyo ukweli. Kwa sababu they thrive when there is commotion. Final well, joining us in studio for this conversation is ODM party Talo attend the political analyst Joseph Simeha. Also joining us live from Eldred is Stephen Sang, Governor Nandi County. Gentlemen, many thanks for joining us. Tina. Let me begin with you, Honorable Sang, joining us live from Eldred. Um, did President Uhuru Kenyatta perhaps have a premonition that this handshake would have this effect later on? Thank you, Michelle. I think uh, if you if you hear that what the president said, uh -huh. definitely uh, the handshake was something that uh, quite a number of uh, political uh, you know operatives, politicians did not expect, and we knew that this was a mess. You know, this was a, a decision that was made between the president, the deputy president, and Raila Odinga and his team. Definitely, you are likely to see some bit of opposition. I could say that you know the president indeed you know uh, uh, did anticipate that would be some bit of jitter. You know, we had uh, we we had come from a very highly politicized and and. Uh, you know, the uh, child political environment. Definitely there are going to be, you know, uh, certain challenges here and there. But I think, you know, the president rightfully, you know, identified that there was going to be challenges. But however, you know, uh, as the leader of, uh, you know, uh, our party, as Raila Odinga was, president has been able to manage a number of us. I can tell you for a fact, like personally, I was against this, uh, you know, uh, uh, handshake from the word go because we couldn't, we didn't get this thing quite clearly. Mm -hmm. The deputy president and the, deputy and the president have been able to explain to us, we understood, you know, the handshake for what it is. But apparently, I think, uh, you know, Raila Odinga and his team on the other side has not done en enough to make his people understand what exactly the, the handshake was all about. Right, right. And we are even now seeing a very uh, interesting scenario where it appears even one of the principal to the handshake may not have understood actually what the president meant. But, well, well, it, it was made quite clear uh, beforehand that the handshake initially was a two-man affair between uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta and Raila Odinga uh, later on. But is, is this materializing into what it was meant to do, and that is building bridges in the country? I would want to say that I think the president has clearly made it uh, known to Kenyans that the handshake was meant to bring Kenyans together. And by the way, for the president and the deputy president, this is a continuation of a political ideology that they started way back in 2013 when the two you know, uh, leaders, you know, Uru Kenyatta and William Ruto came together. In 2017, they brought together all their parties. We made our parties and got into Jubilee. So for Uru Kenyatta, this was actually a culmination of a continuous 
uh, you know, political ideology of bringing Kenyans of different political persuasions into one fold. Mm -hmm. So for the president, this was, and, and the deputy, this was a continuation of our political ideology. Sorry. However, you know, uh, from the NASA's side, it appears clearly that they were coming with a specific agenda and that agenda may not have even been shared with the president himself. All right. Well, let's bring in uh, Joseph Simeha. He's a political analyst and the ODM party stalwart. Simeha, thank you for joining us tonight. There have been allegations that uh, allies of Varela Odinga, or those in the ODM party, have been looking to use this handshake to bring cracks within the Jubilee party. Your thoughts on the same? Uh, thank you very much, Michelle, and uh, thank you for having me this evening. Um, I just I think it depends on what one understands from uh, this thing that is called um, handshake because uh, initially and as you have rightly pointed out you know the president and uh, honorable Raila Odinga told us that told Kenyans that this is uh, an initiative between two leaders not political parties not ethnic communities not tribes not anything else but between two leaders so are uh, now when the people start seek to turn it into party or coalition agenda, like I hear a governor there saying, I, I do not understand because the two gentlemen have not come out to tell us that it's uh, something different. Um, I have understood it for, what, for, for, for the information that has been shared in public. If there is some other you know, private confidential information out there somewhere that is informing what is going on, I do not know, and I know a lot of my colleagues do not know about that. Now. Um, you cannot divorce, having said that, let me say that you cannot divorce what happens generally in politics from one agenda that has been made public by two uh, leaders at the national level. What do I mean by that? The competition between the various politicians, political formations, parties, ideas continues. So this wasn't about suspending political competition in this country. That continues uh, to, to the best of my knowledge. And it's a very public thing. We see it uh, all over the place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, Deputy President William Ruto now says Raila Odinga and his allies are trying to eject him from the Jubilee Party using this handshake. But some would argue Deputy President William Ruto left Kanu. He then left ODM. He left UDM. He left URP later on. How sincere do you think he's being in you know, his claims? Or do you think he is trying to leave the party as he's being being accused of. Um, William Ruto could be crying wolf, you know, so that, uh, you know, um, either he wins some kind of sympathy or um, when he does what he's probably planning to do, um, he makes people think that, you see, this is what I was talking about. Uh, there are certain people who are working to kick me out of Jubilee. Obviously, all is not well in that thing that they call Jubilee. Uh, it's been very clear that uh, they speak from different scripts. The, 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 the Kenyatta and, and Ruto speak completely from different scripts. I had him in, in what you've shown uh, on your screens talk about uh, con conmanship, deceit, and so on. What can be more of a con job than what they have done to Kenyans? Uh, this thing that they call Jubilee. What can be more of, a, of deceit than what they, what they are doing to us in terms of um, uh, this unfair taxation in terms of uh, you know borrowing excessive amounts of money out there and stealing most of it what can be more more of a con conmanship than that so i think all this crying wolf is uh, probably him preparing his way um, you know having felt the heat under his seat in the in this thing they call jubilee which he probably realizes that is uh, coming down uh, very hard all right. How many things? That is uh, Joseph Simeha. We continue to discuss the political tensions between Deputy President William Ruto and Opposition Leader Raila Odinga, which have se seem to have reached a climax now. This is the big story. We take a short break. When we come back, we'll be speaking to Nandi Governor Stephen Sang on the same stage. This is KTN News.